CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes is in Washington. Nancy, what's the feeling on Capitol Hill? As far as the wall's concerned, most congressional Republicans are actually less committed to it than the president is or his base is, partially because they have questions about its practicality and partially, Roxana, because, uh, after all, he initially promised that the Mexicans would be paying for the wall, not the American government. Right, Nancy. Slight detail. Some of the president's biggest supporters, including writer Ann Coulter, have called him out in several tweets. One reading, at this point, who doesn't want Trump impeached? If we're not getting a wall, I'd prefer President Pence. How serious is this conservative backlash for President Trump? Well, it's serious because he clearly pays attention to it. He reads those tweets, he watches uh, conservative news outlets, and so uh, he will be well aware of the fact that some pretty big figures in um, conservative circles are um, saying some pretty tough things about him. And, and insofar as that makes him uh, less comfortable striking a deal with congressional leaders, that could be a big challenge to getting this over the finish line. For right now, he still says that he believes that, um, that everyone is on board with uh, some kind of solution for these so-called dreamers. And just today, the White House said that it wants uh, to release its plan within the next seven to ten days and essentially signal to Congress exactly what it expects will be in this eventual deal. So uh, it's not necessarily going to uh, wreck the chances of getting something done, but uh, it could give him pause when he decides, say, to try to work with Democrats on another issue, knowing how intense the blowback could be from uh, some people who he pays a lot of attention to. Now, you mentioned in your piece that Republicans in Congress are divided on how much they support the president's discussions with Democrats on DACA. This is the second time in a week, or in a number of days, really, that he has worked on a deal with Democrats, this time over a meal of sesame crispy beef, apparently. What does this co cooperation mean for his fellow Republicans? You know, I think it kind of depends on the issue. Uh, on something like this, uh, the DREAM Act, Republicans, by and large, certainly not uh, not uh, uh, unanimously, but a lot of Republicans are comfortable with the notion of at least granting legal status to these 800,000 or so uh, young Americans who were brought to this country illegally as children. So there's not a ton of disagreement there, even though it's not necessarily the issue that Republicans would have chosen to tackle had the president uh, not removed DACA protections for these young people and sort of uh, necessitated some kind of legislative solution. And in a way, Republicans like that the president is taking the lead in these negotiations, because after all, his base uh, is their base, too. And they know that they're going to have uh, some conservative voters who don't like the idea of protecting these young people, who think that it amounts to uh, amnesty or letting them skip the line. And so, uh, in a way, having the president deal with deal with it takes some heat off of them. Hmm. And how about Democrats? How are they approaching talks with the White House, given their base's aversion to President Trump? Right. Well, you saw even the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer say in that hot mic moment, hey, he really likes us, or he really likes me anyway. Uh, so I think that uh, it certainly opens uh, the door for Democrats to try to figure out if uh, they actually can make some headway on some of their priorities, even though uh, they are relatively powerless on Capitol Hill right now. They don't control the House, they don't control the Senate, and the conventional wisdom is that when you are in the minority like that, you're kind of in the wilderness and you really can't control the agenda. But uh, Democrats sense that perhaps because they're working with a pretty transactional president who likes to get uncomplicated things done quickly, uh, that perhaps they can work with him on particular issues. However, just like you've got um, some on the right saying, hold on a second, what are you agreeing to? You've got voices like that on the left as well, uh, saying, why didn't you push for this? If you were going to go that far, why didn't you take it another mm -hmm. step? Uh, and so this is, you know, everybody's still got their training wheels on here. This is a totally new situation that uh, both sides are still trying to get their heads around. Yeah, it's hard to find compromise. That's why it's taken so many years to find an agreement on immigration mm -hmm. and DACA. What do we know about the actual policy details of this potential immigration deal between 
President Trump and the Democrats? Well, we know that it would involve uh, some kind of legal status for uh, these so-called dreamers who qualify. Uh, how they would qualify is obviously something that would still need to be worked out. We don't know whether the DREAM Act, which is this uh, democratic piece of legislation that's been out there for about a decade and a half, it has passed the House mm -hmm. and the Senate in the past as part of um, more comprehensive immigration reform that eventually stalled, um, but it does have some bipartisan partisan support and that the sticky issue once again there is that the dream act does allow some of these young people if they go to college or if they enter the military to then apply for citizenship and so uh, whether the president now that he has sort of experienced the full heat of this backlash whether he will uh, still go ahead and support the notion of citizenship after he has said no we're not talking about citizenship is something that is yet to be determined and then beyond that how large of a border security funding package are Republicans going to demand be paired with uh, whatever legalization they come up with Democrats you know say that they're you know fine with spending a bunch of money on more security things like drones and improving roads near the border as long as there's no wall funding included and it seems pretty clear at this point that that is such a hot potato that it's going to be left aside for another day Nancy Cordes in Washington thank you for your insight you're welcome